That's better. I think. All right, we're gonna have some fun today. We're gonna review Jacob's Ladder. This likely isn't one to be considered a particularly fun movie. But it is a really good movie. Mostly because of Tim Robbins and his brilliant portrayal of Jacob, the man who gets the point. Wait, no, I don't want that to happen this time. Besides, that'd be silly if he died right there. Jacob wakes up on the subway and it's all right. His hair is okay, because after all, Tim Robbins has fabulous hair in this film. Excuse me, uh, do you know if we've passed Bergen Street yet? Bergen. Don't stare at me, you got the bug eyes. Sorry about the bug eyes thing. I'll be in my office. Seriously, though, that last glare you see her giving as the subway pulls away is quite off-putting, especially since it goes by so quick. And, <laughs> I hope that's a tail. I don't know. Should I have censored that? Hmm. So Jacob's Ladder was one of the inspirations for the Silent Hill series, and you'll see that pretty early on as Jacob finds himself completely blocked from the exits, something you'd find very commonly in Silent Hill. And the chains here on the door were copied exactly for a part in Silent Hill 3. In fact, the design of this subway looks very familiar, and even the street Jacob is trying to get to, Bergen Street, was put into Silent Hill 3. Okay, things might be getting a wee bit strange, Jacob, but I'm pretty sure faking out a train doesn't work. Okay, it does. Never mind. I'm an idiot like usual. A lot of the time with me, it's the little things that will really leave an impression, and this movie is really good at doing that. To relate it to Silent Hill again, when you're in the hospital and the fourth floor button just appears when there is no fourth floor to the building, that really stuck in my head, enough for it to appear in one of my dreams once. Then again, my dreams often contain things I'd never think twice about, so they're probably not a particularly good example. And Jacob's Ladder's got some kind of strange elevator controls too, where you press in the panel with pennies. Normally you have to press at least quarters to get to the right floor. I might have invented in my head that this was the control panel since it looks to be on the door, but whatever, don't correct me, I like it better that way. So Jacob lives now with his girlfriend Jesse. He used to be married and used to have three kids. Down to two now, cause one of them had to die. And let's go with the, that one. <laughs> Jacob's back's been hurting him, so naturally he goes in to get his neck snapped. Always makes me feel better. Better not. Despite his little bit of murder, Louis is actually a very clear force for good to Jacob, as some of his dialogue makes very apparent. You know you look like an angel, Louis? Like an overgrown cherub. <laughs> Anyone ever tell you that? Yeah. You. Every time I see you. You're a lifesaver, Louis. But who cares? That's not as meaningful as this. It's a letter, baby! It's a bag! It's a bag! Oh, yes! Wait a minute, Mr. Postman! Wait a minute, Mr. Postman! Please, Mr. Postman! 
Well, I can't say I've seen people quite that excited to see a mailman just walking down the street. Maybe when they make a delivery you're really waiting for, but I think the reaction to them just walking would be a bit more like this. Okay, that's a bit extreme in the other direction. I was kind of just thinking, oh, look. It's a male man. But as the car passes, we once again get a glimpse of something wrong with the distorted faces. Jacob just goes on with his day after that, like you do. Apparently no question for Mr. Lookout, even. Not that big a deal. It happens. He's a mailman. Things start falling apart more when Jacob goes to his doctor, only to find out that not only does he not exist, but they have no record of Jacob ever coming here. So when he sees the receptionist has had a bit too much taken off the top, he makes a bolt for what should be his doctor's office. Can I help you? It's Dr. Carlson, isn't this his office? Dr. Carlson died. Ah, right. So like most hospital procedures, they deleted all records of him ever working there and tossed his patient files into the fire. No patient should ever outlive their doctor. It's not right. One of the main parts Jesse plays in this story is dismissing the weird things Jacob sees and trying to keep him focused on his life with her. Or just go get him drunk. <laughs> Whoa, that is strange. Most parties I go to, they keep the beer inside the head in the fridge. It's not weird! You have a very strange line. <laughs> no, it's not funny. See, according to this, you're already dead. And that's why palm readings and fortune telling are completely useless. Now that the palm part of the party is over, it's dancing time! Well, until Jacob realizes he'll never be able to get down like that guy. This kind of really quick neck spasms is something, again, you can tell Silent Hill took inspiration from. But when he sees a monster tail murder Jesse, Jacob faces it. Parties are ruined. What's to say? Oh my god, I'm calling the doctor. It turns out Jacob is burning up, so he needs to get as cool as ice. Well, luckily instead of waking up with a kidney missing, Jacob discovers that ice makes him go back in time and think his future was a dream. I can't say I've had the same experience with ice, but I can say I am immediately going to jump in a bathtub full of it after this review. Daddy, what was that noise? And just so nothing is straightforward, Jesse tells Jacob he was talking about his ex Sarah and the kids during his fever dream, so both sides say the other is a dream. Plus, we get shots of Jacob being airlifted after getting the point earlier. So at this point, Jacob is feeling pretty alone with all this bizarreness going on around him, until one of his army buddies wants to meet up with him, and they discover they have both been seeing things. Jacob finally has an ally in this. A lucky day. Oh man. Well, at the funeral for him, most of the rest of who were with them in Vietnam say they've also been having these demonic visions, so they decide to hire a lawyer in hopes of getting an answer from the army about what might have happened to them to trigger this. Now things are finally looking up a bit. Oh man. Mmm, well, just about. Right after all his friends back out and Jason Lawyer Xander says there's no case as the army says none of them were even in Vietnam as they were discharged on psychological grounds beforehand. Guess that must be true. I mean, some more army best friends show up to beat their version of the truth into Jacob's head. A lucky day. He escapes only to get robbed by Santa. Isn't that always the way? A lucky day. Keep Louie. Where's Louie? He's out of it. Let's take him down x-ray. Oh, and down he's gonna go! 
To the other world. Yes, again, this was one of the other highly influential scenes from this movie on the Silent Hill series. It's definitely my favorite screwed up scene of the film, and as mentioned, very reminiscent of an other world transition. The following scene is played very quiet and unsettling. It's the perfect way to continue the feeling of horror off the last scene rather than trying to be loud and in your face. You know something is horribly wrong. You can see it in the scene. It doesn't need to beat it into your head and is way more effective for it. Where do you want to go? Home. This is your home. You're dead. You just hurt my back. I'm not dead. What are you then? I'm alive. Then what are you doing here? Get me out of here. There is no out of here. You've been killed. Don't you remember? Luckily, Mr. No Eyes Needle to the Forehead was just the ticket, and Jacob wakes up to his ex wife and children. Jacob, I still love you. Dream on. Again, something remarkably unsettling, just a voice heard off screen, never shown, never explained. It makes the feeling for the rest of the scene really uncomfortable as you just want to be able to see what it was. It's all about the way this is executed as well, as you have a good idea about who or what said that, so it's not like it feels like they just didn't know so didn't show. It's stuff like this that really shows you how far off the mark the Silent Hill films were with what inspired the games. Here's how they would have played this. I still love you. Dream on. God, no. So, Louis shows up. He's especially passionate about Jacob for just being his chiropractor, huh? This is barbaric. Barbaric! Why don't you just burn him at the stake and put him out of his misery? Sir, you're gonna have to leave. Stay back! Take one step and I'll wrap this around your neck. Might be a little bit more to him. Eckhart saw hell too. He said the only thing that burns in hell is the part of you that won't let go of your life. Your memories, your attachments, they burn them all away. But they're not punishing you, he said. They're freeing your soul. If you're frightened of dying and you're holding on, you'll see devils tearing your life away. But if you've made your peace, then the devils are really angels freeing you from the earth. He gets Jacob back on his feet and he remembers all the good times, like the war and... And there's an example of a jump scare actually done well. It doesn't feel cheap and just jammed in to be a cheap scare. That's the big difference. Also, the film isn't jammed packed with them and relying on them to be its source of terror because it's not real horror when it's done like that. When you're unsettled from the narrative of the story, then they hit you with something like this, it can actually work. Then Jacob gets contacted by a man who claims to actually know what happened to him. He got dragged into making an experimental drug to bring out people's rage, and it got tested on Jacob's squad. They were sure your unit would have the highest kill ratio of any in the whole goddamn offensive, and they were right, you did. Except not the way they thought. No one can remember that night. Like it flashes. They don't make sense. There was an attack. Yeah, but now it's a con. You killed each other. After hearing this exciting news, Jacob rushes home to tell. But this time not the home with Jesse, his ex-wife's place where we hear an important line replayed. If you're frightened of dying and you're holding on, you'll see devils tearing your life away. If you've made your peace, then the devils are really angels freeing you. He sees his child he's lost again and goes up into the light with him and we learn he's accepted his fate. <laughs> 
he never made it out of Vietnam. I like too that the film didn't completely hide this twist from you. They've had several mentions of Jacob being dead already, and by doing it this way, instead of thinking that this might be the twist, it makes you want to fight it in your head for this not being the case. Or it'll make you think that's exactly the case. <laughs> Whatever. This is a really strong, effective movie. It pulls a lot of things off with subtlety, and I highly recommend watching it on your own without my commentary to get the full impact. Especially if you're a fan of Silent Hill, you should check this out to see one of its big influences. And obviously the bad ending of the first game is a direct reference to this film as well. There are also a few deleted scenes I'd like to talk about about. First, where Jacob hears the mystery voice again. Dream on. Honestly, I think this scene is probably better off cut, as I really like that voice only coming in the one time, especially where it did. I do, however, really like that upon exiting the toilet stall, the homeless person seen washing has disappeared and left only blood behind. There is also more with the chemist actually giving Jacob a cure after their discussion. This is another I think is better off cut, as after the last scene with Louie, it seems like it's building towards the conclusion. This scene could go a bit towards making you think Jacob is cured and this is actually reality, but I think being given the explanation of the drug was enough. The only deleted scene that I really feel should have stayed was the final encounter with Jezzy, since she just kind of disappears in the regular cut. And Silent Hill fans might notice that this transformation of sorts looks very similar to the Mary Maria one at the end of Silent Hill 2. When Jacob reveals Jezebel to be himself, it also explains more Jezzy's role. The biblical Jezebel became associated with false prophets, and Jezzy's point here was usually to keep Jacob attached to this world he'd created. The reveal that it was himself shows again it was Jacob keeping himself there as he wasn't ready to move on. And I can't think of a good ending joke after that, so let's try a cameo. I call upon! Damn. A moment ago, I knew the name. Well, there is one person I've never tried. All right. I call upon Phelan! You're sure about this, right? You know what this means. Yeah, that I'll be talking to myself with different letters at the end of my name. Don't! We've come too far for you to try and block it now. Besides, it's all been falling apart since this. I died again. It was so easy for you, us, me, to maintain this early on. It just kept replaying over and over in my head. Death. I would die at the end of every one of these videos. Made perfect sense. Just play it off as a gag and move on to the next video. But then it was getting closer. I had to avoid it at any cost. I couldn't even sit here anymore unless it was a Resident Evil review where I was half playing someone else. And then to maintain my reality, I'd just point out all the inconsistencies with my surroundings. And that's when I remembered it. I remembered Doctor Who and its great cheating death trick. I regenerated into Thomas. Why him? He's the one who found me. Tried to call an ambulance. And turning into a cat? How does that make any sense? Because I did what I always do, hid behind humor. There can't be any amount of seriousness behind turning into a cat. And after that, I avoided it. I went on. I've had a good life with this. Met some good friends? My girlfriend? I was in these movies? Or are these things that actually happened to me? The review was the last thing I did. Fresh in my mind, I held on to it, envisioned my life if it went along that path. Look at your shirt. Red matter. It's black now. 
it always was. But that art attack was so fake! That was my memory of it. The video never got made, Phelan. I never finished anything. <laughs> Not one review. <laughs> I just thought he... Phelan. But I thought you... I died of a heart attack watching Mac and me. And then my reality was undone by a tennis ball. <laughs> I'd say say la vie, but I suppose it's quite the opposite of that. I have to look now. I've tried avoiding this by cutting everything off every time I almost did, but... It's time. It's been looking at me for so long, and now it's time to look back. Five years ago... Though I suppose in actuality five minutes ago, I died making a video review. I can finally accept it. It's been quite a journey. If I may be meta one last time, whether you're actually there or not, I'd like to thank you all for helping me along the way.